Hello YouTube, this is Golby Yu Gi here, and this is part 7 of my beginner's guide to Dark Souls 3. And we got to the Cliff Underside bonfire right here from the um, foot of the wall bonfire. So we actually got through two bonfires the Undead Settlement, settlement bonfire straight after the foot of the high wall uh, bonfire, however. So yeah, we'll continue on and, you know, get to the next bonfire in this part. So you just uh, go out the stairs on the other side of the um, Cliff Underside bonfire and you'll come up here. Which is, yeah, it gives you a good uh, view of the surroundings. You get to see um, everything else that's going on. There's actually one bonfire right down there uh, where that crystal lizard is in the distance. I don't know if you guys can see that. But yeah, uh, you should uh, definitely uh, check out the views around here. Let me see, can I get it from here? No, it's actually, the bonfire is out of the draw distance, I, I think, but you can see the crystal lizard over there. So yeah, you continue on this side, uh, kill all of these enemies. They can be a tough one because they're so close together, and if you're swinging a big weapon around, you know, they could clip off these uh, wood panels, so be careful about that. And here is an NPC, Cornix, the old pyromancer of the Great Swamp. Let's skip through his dialogue because we don't want to spoil anything. And he'll go back to Farrowing Shrine and he'll be your pyromancy vendor. Actually, extremely uh, useful for every kind of player because pyromancies can usually be cast by someone who's not got a lot of stats, especially in these games. Uh, but yeah, pyromancy is generally good for every type of character, but. Well, he is the merchant for all of them, or most of them, at least till the late game. Okay. Get a plunging attack on this guy. Oh, he tried to do one of his own. This guy is probably one of the tougher of these types of enemies, the ones with the pots. Just an absolute truck. And very difficult to avoid because he's just so fast. But uh, he does take it. Decent beaten before going down, but I mean he gives a good few souls, so I guess it's worth it As you can see straight ahead is where we came from at the start of uh, the last episode This is the cliff underside bonfire right down below us and I uh, continue on Get an item right here soul packet and right down here is the fire clutch ring which boosts fire damage not hugely but considerably and um, Does a decent bit of you know damage to your overall defenses, so it's kind of like a 50-50 a ring, you take more damage, you do more damage, but it's still very good for pyromancers, especially for damage builds, like just pure, you know, nuke builds or whatever. Jump, oh, we missed. Come up this side, get an item, and uh, watch for an ambush behind you. This this little shit. And, yeah, they never drop anything for me. Hopefully you guys have better luck because they drop a few good items. Move over this side of the stairs and you'll see a cart below. That's usually what I aim for to drop down to. Uh, it doesn't really do much to prevent you taking fall damage, but at least it shows you, you know, where you should be dropping down to avoid aggroing anything. Then you just, you know... Stick to the wall and curve inside here to fight this dog. And yeah, that's that dog got d gone, you know. Whatever. Okay, some rats in front of us. Uh, you should probably be careful here and try and use your shield because they do kind of stagger lock you if you get a few of them on you at once. So if you block a few of them with your shield and wait for like them to stop for a second, and you can just go like that. Take a couple of them out with you. Then, when there's only one of them left, it's super easy because you can just hit your shield up, wait for them to attack, and as soon as they have, just finish them off. Gonna quickly heal up. In this enemy, in this fog, there are three enemies: one giant rat plus two small rats. So, we'll edge slowly closer to the fog, and you know, you know, draw back, and you'll get them one at a time. It uh, avoids you getting killed by a giant rat when there's two more guys picking away with, at you and stunning you. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, fortunately, we've only two of them to deal with instead of three. But uh, still, I thought that would actually work. As you can see, you can get stagger luck pretty damn easily. That's even worse when you have three rats on you. And there we go. 
all, th all three grass down. Uh, we can't get through here yet. We need the mortician's ashes uh, in order to give to the shrine handmaid, who's the merchant of the shrine. And then once you have those uh, mortician's ashes, you give them to her. And then you unlock items to buy, and one of those items is the key to uh, down there, which unlocks even more NPCs, so it's totally uh, worth doing that. Here is the uh, dilapidated bridge bonfire, so I'm going to tag this and uh, rest at it, get my health back, since I'm not going to be going down where I've killed those enemies again, so there's really no point not resting. Continue on, try and avoid fighting this guy, because he's not hard, but he's not really worth the time, you don't really get anything by killing him, and rush up here to get the uh, crystal lizard. If you uh, jump attack on them, which is done by running and pressing R2, you will actually flip them over, flipping them over then, allowing you an easy and free kill. No items over here. Continue back down, except take a left and go into this building. There's nothing in this room here, but it does lead to where there are some interesting items. A few items, at least. There is a, one of those evangelists up there, so you should probably focus on taking her out first since she is the more um, painful enemy to deal with and you don't really want to fight her and other ones by running past. Once you get her to go down though, you can get a free plunge attack and she's much easier to deal with. Okay, here we go. It's not fun to deal with her plus another guy, but we've no choice here. Oh, she cast a spell. Do not get hit by that because that hits hard and gives you some bleed, which is not good when her weapon also gives bleed. It means you can get uh, hit by one of these and uh, one of our swings with her with her mace and you get blood out, which can usually mean death. Oh, you got the backstab. Nice. Okay. With her down, the rest of uh, this part is super easy. There's only... No, there's actually more than three, but there's only three enemies you have to worry about um, right about now. Later on, there'll be more, but we can worry about them later on. So you can run and jump off here to get the rusted coin, which is actually pretty good. It's one of the starting gifts. Actually, the gold coin, I think, is the starting gift, not the, the plain coin. But uh, yeah, the... Uh, the rusted coin does allow you to uh, get higher item discovery for a short while, and that can be useful if you see an item that you really want, for example the mace that this um, evangelist has, or perhaps you really want a, um, a Zweihander, so you can farm the uh, little thralls with the Zweihander, you know, if you want that, just pop the coin and get to kill him. It's quite, it's quite good at farming. Uh, take a left here and you'll see two enemies, but be careful, because there's actually a third in here. Although, only two of these aggroed, so I guess it's not too bad. Oh, wow. I was not expecting to do uh, get hit right there. But, uh, no worries. There is a guy in here that will ambush you, so... Do be careful. Okay, I'm gonna go in. If I can take out this one here first, I can... It'll take a huge weight off my shoulders. <laughs> okay. Quickly snag this item, the whip. Very good weapon. Not as good as it was in Dark Souls 2, and I know people will say, well, it wasn't that good in Dark Souls 2. I think it was great in Dark Souls 2, especially the old whip. Quickly get a backstab in this guy. And I haven't missed out on that one item that some people are probably saying, eh, you missed out on an item. No, I didn't. I just I was getting that guy first. So you can just run through those boxes and run all the way down here and you get another item. Soul of an Unknown Traveler. And you might say, well, those Soul of an Unknown Traveler is Soul of a Lost Soldier, or whatever they're called. They might not, you might not think they're good items, but they actually all add up. If you've got, like, ten of those in a level, that should be, like, nearly 5,000 free souls, which is significant. That's an extra 50% souls than what I have right now. These guys are really weak to thrusting attacks, but if you've like an axe or a weapon that can't do thrusting attacks, they are a bit uh, more difficult to kill. And when I was talking about that ambush earlier on, it was these guys I was talking about, so... Yeah, as you can see, it wasn't really worth stopping that ambush or paying any mind to it, because it was just so easy. They drop down and they don't attack you for quite a few seconds, giving you ample time to, you know, finish them off, even with a, a kind of bad weapon for crowd control like the uh, rapier I have. Quickly knock this down. 
to pick up that item. Another, uh, another soul packet, so really, really good. And don't be killed by this guy. Just get rid of him quickly and get your charcoal pine resin. Charcoal pine resin is actually great for the boss of this area. And these are the last items, um you need to get in this area uh, the sunlight warrior of sunlight um thing we just got you might say what the hell is that that's actually a covenant item so it actually allows you to join a covenant um covenants get different rewards and when you pray at certain altars you can swap in those rewards for other rewards so for example if you're a warrior of sunlight if you co-op with someone you get a sunlight medal once you've 10 of those you can trade them to the altar and get an item and then when you've 30 you can trade uh, those uh, extra 20 in for the second item Every Covenant, except like a few of them, have a two items for 10 or 30 of their respective reward currencies. I won't get into too much detail about that though. Um, so once you've opened the store, you're pretty much done here. This will just lead us out back to where that burning witch tree was. So yeah, by the way, there is that one item up there, but I'm not getting it. It's it's literally a set of Kukri. Kukri are throwing knives that do bleed damage. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This was part 7. And the second part of the Undead Settlement, I think I should be able to get most of the Undead Settlement done in the next video, or the next two videos, if it takes that long. And apologies for a bit of stuttering during this video, I got kind of confused at a couple of points, but uh, it shouldn't have mattered too much. Okay guys, peace out and thank you.